The right dress for women in wartime is a problem that's been solved by the authorities in cooperation with the industry's famous dress designers, such as Norman Hartnell. The main essentials are utility and economy. The artist joins hands with the craftsman. The manufacturer takes the designs a step further by preparing the patterns in various sizes. The materials are cut to pattern by ingenious electric shears. To avoid dullness and any tendency to look alike, some of the utility frocks can be made in 10 different materials and 12 different colors, 120 variations in all. The austere authorities allow the utility dressmakers 50 models a year, and as a result of careful production, they can all be made at less cost than before the war. Machining the material is simplified by the ban on pleats. There must be no more than two box or four knife. Yes, and no more than 160 inches of pin tucking, ladies. Making the buttonholes. Buttons are limited to five. Reinforcing the seams for hard wear. It's a pressing business, this question of utility clothing, especially just now when the moths in the wardrobe are showing their ribs. But they won't get such a luxurious meal in future. But besides that little matter of pleats, pockets are limited to two. A buyer inspects the range. You can see the great variety of materials in the finished dresses. Just a few of the many possible. And here are some of these utility features. A rip-proof seam, reinforced shoulders, bound buttonholes and so on. In spite of restrictions, these dresses are most becoming. As you watch these mannequins, no doubt you'll be impressed with the distinctiveness of each model. You might have expected that mass production look, but designers and makers between them have met the demand for economy without sacrificing anything to style and fashion. The same design, but different materials, each with its own charm. An old saw says that clothes do much to make a man. Yes, they make a man make them for women, utility clothes. 